So we're going to be talking about four fields. What are, what are the four fields? Uh, basically, the four fields is an outline of what Jesus talks about in the parable of the harvest and the gospel of Mark and other gospels. And the basic concept is we have these four fields that we are laboring in uh, with the goal of bringing in a harvest. So we're, we're thinking in terms of, of a farmer. The first thing he has to do is he has to identify the fields in which he's going to labor in and prepare those fields. And then when he does that, he sows the seed in preparation to bring in a harvest. Uh, the farmer casts the seed, but he doesn't cause the seed to grow. Uh, one day the seed comes up on its own, and he comes out and he sees growth. And when the growth comes to maturity, it bears fruit, and he brings in the harvest. And any good farmer who is preparing for the future wants to increase his harvest every year. And to do that, he's going to need more laborers. And so he needs to, he needs to multiply laborers for the harvest. And he sets some aside for food, and he sets some aside for future harvesting. Uh, so the cycle just continues over and over again. And we see this process of multiplication in this parable. And this is the, what we are going to apply, this template, this framework, we are going to apply to our outreach initiatives. So now that we've got this framework, basically what we're going to do is we're, we're going to kind of apply it again back to uh, our outreach initiatives. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify lostness. Where do we need to go? Where is there lostness? Uh, this applies to an individual. This applies to a church, a ministry. Uh, what we're going to do is identify where we know we can make an impact with the gospel. So for an individual, uh, we will help them map out their area of influence, people they know, places they go, uh, places they, they frequent, friends, neighbors, family, things like that. Uh, and then for a church or a ministry, for example, we might look at a city and we might try to figure out where is their lostness um, different uh, ethnicities, people groups within in a given context that we need to target for the gospel. And so we're, we're gonna literally pick a place where we plan to go plant seed, where, we're gonna, where we are wanting to bring in a harvest. And once we've identified where we're gonna take the gospel, we need to sow the seed. So we seed, we cast the seed, we cast the gospel, we share the gospel, and communicate it in a way where people can receive it and it can take root. Now, all we are responsible for in this field is casting the seed. Uh, when Jesus gives the parable of the harvest again, he's talking about the four soils. Uh, all the farmer does is cast the seed and some of the seed lands amongst the rocks, some of it's devoured by birds, some of it is choked off by the, by the weeds and the, the uh, thorns and, and other seed lands on the good soil. Uh, and it grows up and bears 30, 60, some 100 fold. Uh, but the farmer casts the seed uh, in, a, in a responsible way, and I think it's important for us to do that as well. Uh, we want the seed as much as possible to land on the good soil, uh, but ultimately that's the work of God. And so we want to find practical ways where we can share simple, biblical, and reproducible gospel presentations. And we are going to start to identify where that seed is starting to, to grow up and work with those people. There's basically four responses to the gospel. Uh, when Paul goes to the, up to the Areopagus and he preaches the gospel, Jesus is risen. Uh, some of them mock him, and we would consider that a red light. Others had more questions. They wanted further dialogue. We would consider those yellow lights. And after he was done, he starts to leave, and some of them followed him. They believed. Uh, that, that would be considered a green light. Uh, the fourth response to the gospel is somebody who is already a believer, somebody who has already put their faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, but we don't ignore them. We actually want to come alongside of them and train them how they can be a laborer in the harvest. So that's uh, actually a, a good opportunity for us to expand and increase our laborers. So we share the gospel. Uh, we want to be able to share our story. We want to be able to share God's story. And then we also have something called Stories of Hope. Uh, stories of Hope are basically designed for kind of your yellow light, people who have more questions. Uh, it just opens up 
um, conversation by, by focusing on certain uh, passages of scriptures, parables, uh, things that kind of expose God's grace and mercy and, and enter into a dialogue with these people to help them expose uh, who, who God is and his character and his love that he has for us. And ultimately, uh, the gospel uh, as kind of a bridge to, to getting them exposed to the gospel more fully. Uh, but then as we see um, these grow up, these seeds grow into maturity, uh, we start to make disciples. We see growth, and we start the discipleship process. And so basically we're going to have short-term discipleship and long-term discipleship. And we have tools in place that, that people will be trained on uh, as they are identifying lost and sharing the gospel. Everyone can make a disciple. We feel the Great Commission is to go and make disciples. Why? Because all authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and earth. Therefore, we are to go and make disciples of all nations. And we, we feel that's, that's a, a command for the church. And so each individual member of the church has a responsibility to make disciples. Uh, is everyone going to be a hundredfold labor? No. Some are going to be 30. Some are going to be 60. Some are going to be a hundredfold. But each member of our congregation, every, every person who is a follower of Jesus Christ can make disciples. And we can teach them simple ways to do this. And so we will have uh, some outlines for them to follow for short-term and long-term discipleship. But ultimately, we want to teach them a process that we call uh, three-thirds uh, some would call it T for T, training for trainers, uh, that will give them kind of an outline as to what, how, how do you make a disciple, what do you do. And once you understand the framework, your Bible basically is your guide. And so you could study through the Gospel of John, Gospel of Mark, you could study through Ephesians, you could study through Genesis, uh, and use this outline for any study you want to do. Uh, so that it, again, it's, it's simple, it's biblical, it's reproducible. Uh, because if it can't reproduce, if you give a lesson that somebody couldn't reproduce, it stops with you. It stops with the person you're trying to disciple. And our goal in this whole process is always multiplication. We need more laborers. And so as we see the harvest come in, we see this growth come to maturity, uh, here we start to gather. And this is basically uh, what we would call church identity. And we start basically what we would identify as church formation. And we start to look at what does a church do? What are the functions of a church? And as we see these people that are gathering start to do these things, uh, we identify that they are, they're doing the things that a church is supposed to do then they probably are a church. And we want to build that identity into this gathering so that, again, they're encouraged to multiply. Um, it's not relying on a few faithful leaders. It's relying upon the full body functioning together to fulfill the fullness of what the church is supposed to be and what the church is supposed to do. Yeah, and out of this, we're identifying people who are being faithful to all of these different commands uh, that are outlined in Acts 2, uh, primarily, uh, whether it's praying, loving accountability, uh, reading, studying God's Word, the Lord's Supper, worship, all of these different things that we look at that are happening in the book of Acts. We want to start to build this identity here. And the ones that are faithful, we are going to pour more into, and we're going to even give them more disciple, give them leadership tools, because we want them to start engaging lostness, sharing the gospel, making disciples, and going through the cycle. So we're going to uh, hopefully increase the amount of laborers in the harvest. Is, is our desire that everyone would become a laborer in the harvest? Absolutely. It is our, is it our, it, it's our desire. Uh, but we recognize that not everybody's going to take the responsibility to do that. They're, they're not going to, uh, not every believer is going to yield their full lives to God. Uh, even though that is our desire. But the ones that do, we want to work with them, we want to help them, we want them to come to maturity so they can enter into this process of making disciples. So basically what we have in these four fields, five parts, the fifth part, 
being leadership, uh, is we have this framework now in which we're going to put tools into each of these in which we can equip people for the work of ministry. And these tools are, again, are, are practical ways that they can engage this lost world and enter into the Great Commission and be a part of it and hopefully multiply until there's no place left.